Recently, Kaoji Games has reached out to me with an offer to do a video on Elsword, specifically highlighting the Season 2 updates coming around. Elsword is a free-to-play 2.5D side-scrolling action MMORPG with an overall anime aesthetic to the entirety of the game's design. And when I saw the game, I was more so interested in the side-scrolling action part of the game, and I decided to give it a try, and I actually quite enjoyed it. So if you're interested in giving this a shot, then you can use my link below to get started right away, but if you want to hear more, then I'll explain to you what I found so interesting about Elsword. Now, Elsword is a combination of side-scrolling beat-em-up games with MMORPG skill trees. One of the main things that you do in Elsword is to clear dungeons, and you can either clear these dungeons by yourself, or you can do it with friends. And the way that most of these dungeons are laid out in Elsword is that the levels are a lot like beat-em-up levels, with very linear progression, and you get a little mini-map every time you clear an area. And they're great for time-killing. This is because as the game goes on, you start to get mini-objectives mid-mission, examples being to clear the mission in a certain amount of time, or do a specific amount of damage to the the boss, and achieving these goals nets you extra rewards on top of the normal dungeon rewards. And this helps make replaying dungeons for quests way more appealing, and I honestly found myself blinking and it was 3am while getting my rows up to level. And speaking of rows, we should talk about the characters in Elseward. Elseward has a pretty sizable cast, and each of the characters in the game are just that, their characters. They have their own personalities and personal journeys, and they have their own reasons for running through the story like they do. And this is shown in the cutscenes between story events and missions, where each character has unique, fully voice acted interactions with key players in the story. The two I tested out were Rose and Chung, who are the two I picked because I really like their designs and their movesets look the coolest to me. But looking at more of the characters, there's definitely some I want to go back and give a try sometime. It also helps that you can have multiple character save files. Though, speaking of character designs, one of the things that caught my attention right off the bat with Elseward was the character design and art style, as they were both very anime-esque, a lot of the characters being very cutesy at first. But as you evolve and level your character along with changing their classes, they also begin to physically change, going from more simplistic, cute designs to way more complex ones, which helps shows this physical growth and reflects the in-game growth as well. Also, from what I read, the characters themselves age when they change their class, which helps reinforce the idea that these people have been training really hard and for a long time. And it's small details like this that help make me feel like the team who is working on Elseward is putting a lot of effort into it to make sure that the game is an enjoyable experience. Along with this, it helps remind me of that classic era of experimental 3DS games, where developers would experiment with different ideas and concepts just to see if it worked. And luckily, kind of like a 3DS game, the game itself isn't too demanding to run either, as most PCs should be able to run this game without much of an issue. And playing the game is just as simple, as the game itself is one of those easy-to-learn, difficult-to-master style systems, where you not only need to figure out the controls, but also when and when not to use skills at certain times. But you also need to figure out how to balance out your run through a dungeon with the game's own rating system to pull in those high ranking scores. And with each character playing differently with some sort of different combat system, you usually just need to find the character who clicks the best with you. One of the ones that I learned was Rose, who is a gunslinger character. And the way her system works is you need to figure out when is the right time to swap between your four different guns, which all have their different strengths and weaknesses. First, of course, like any good gunslinger, Rose has a revolver, which is a middle-of-the-road kind of weapon. It's not too fast, but not too slow, does normal damage, and has a normal range. You'll use these the most throughout your runs through a dungeon. Then you can switch to her rifles, which are really slow, but pack a solid punch, and have a decent range to keep enemies away from you to prevent you from taking damage, which lowers your damage-taking score. But one of the biggest downsides of the rifles is they don't allow you to build up your combo meter, which then affects your combo score at the end of the level. Then, of course, you have her gats, which are really fast and hit really quickly and hit a bunch of times too, but they have limited range and they don't do a lot of damage. They're perfect for up-close combat encounters, but they also put you in danger. These are the type of weapons that are perfect for building up combo, as you can either use them on the boss at the end of the level, allowing you to rank up easily multiple hundred hit combos, or use them on the enemies throughout the area to build up small but significant combos that will add to your combo ranking at the end of the level. And then of course, you have her cannon arms, which do heavy damage, but are heavy slow, and you have to use them heavy close. And overall, they make Rose feel heavy in her fights. And in playing her, I learned to balance these elements of her character alongside her skills. And this goes for everyone in the game, as in fact, they're all actually getting updates for this season too. As throughout this and next month, there will be a rebalancing patch that helps standardize things like character's base stats and character's base HP, along with a team working on Elseworld focusing more on making player choice matter when choosing a path for your character to go down, such as 
making stat improvements way more noticeable. Along with having skill damage be based on the character path that you choose when upgrading your character. As for example, if you pick a physical damage path, you won't have to worry about some cool skill later in the game not working out the way you wanted it to because the attack type isn't physical. Now it will always be physical and you don't have to worry about this. And then finally, they also say that they're going to give every character some form of evasion skill in some way. So if what I said has interested you at all in Elseward, I recommend giving it a chance. It's a free to play game, so you're not losing out on anything by going and checking it out. And you can get started right away by checking out my link below in the description. And if you want more Elseward outside of the game, Koji Games has also funded an Elseward anime crafted specifically to expand on the lore of the series. So feel free to check that out as well. And with that all being said, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day.